Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some things from our history, our culture, our background or whatever interests you. So please feel free to put your questions in comments below this video or any other of my videos. And I have to say that I'm really grateful for the advice that you leave because they inspire many of my thoughts and my vlogs. And yesterday I have read one comment from my friend in Finland. I hope my, <laughs> my friend, one of the first subscribers who've told me that if all normal democratic countries that border Russia had a chance to change any neighbor they have, because typically countries border other, many other countries, all of us would agree to substitute Russia. And that is so true. When you think about poor countries that by destiny border Russia, and that is Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, Finland, Norway, and many other, of course, the Northern Korea perhaps enjoys this border experience, but when you think about democratic countries that are focused on self-development, that feel pretty comfortable in their beautiful, normal societies, all of us would agree that the most toxic, the most problematic neighbor is Russia. I have to tell you that those people who live far away from Russia sometimes believe it is possible to negotiate something, to decide something with Russia, Soviet Union or something, but actually it is totally and totally impossible. And only those countries who bordered Russia who suffered from this bordering experience will understand Ukraine, Georgia, Moldova, Lithuania. And I guess if you think about um, these democratic neighbors of Russia, all of us, all of them have things to share, have things to tell about the problems they had with Russia. And when I get these questions, when do you think this war will end? I don't have an answer, but I have another question. When did this war start? Because clearly it is not just in February, it is not in 2014. And when we analyze attentively the history of Ukraine, we see that perhaps 300 years, 400 years, so four centuries. And Russia, when it started imagining itself as an empire, received huge toxic doses of chauvinism. And even if I compare it to other old stated, old fashioned empires. Luckily, the majority of them fell apart. Maybe some still exist. It's always a very tricky question, but the level of toxicity that Russia, Russian empire, USSR bears in itself is definitely one of the highest. So sometimes when you, those people who are very far away from Russia, they believe it's possible to negotiate something or to change something, but the closer to Russia you leave, the more problems you get and the more you learn and feel what Russian toxicity, Russian toxic chauvinism is. Um, before this war and long before, maybe 2014, somewhere at the end of 90s, at the beginning of 2000s, when Ukraine was independent, was learning to be independent, and Russia was more focused on uh, Russia. There were lots of Russian people also working here who stayed here after the collapse of the USSR, for example. And they have always even been normal. Having spent like years or decades in Ukraine, they still consider to be chauvinists. Honestly, I don't know any other nation um, I have never communicated with any other culture that is so uh, self-centered and so chauvinistic and so disrespectful to others, especially if you analyze this general population. Of course, there are problems in every country, issues and so on, but Russians, they love spreading chauvinism everywhere. And for example, those people I'm talking about having spent like decades in Ukraine, they will never speak Ukrainian. They will never learn to speak Ukrainian. Because why? You have to learn Russian if you want to speak with them. Then it is really funny to observe such people abroad. 
I have seen many Russians in various hotels, museums, when they start shouting in Russian because how come you don't speak Russian? And like Ukrainians, I don't know, Poles will never do it because we understand that when you're in France, it's okay that people don't speak Ukrainian. It's normal that people don't understand Polish, but Russians will insist, will shout. They believe everyone has to know Russian language. Why? Because of booming Russian economy or great innovations? Or maybe due to the fact that Haharin was the first cosmonaut, but it happened long, 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 long ago. I don't see any other serious achievements in Russia since, since Putin or since Yeltsin or even the USSR. But USSR were using the resources of other countries, stealing ideas, uh, I don't know, <laughs> um, juices, everything, best people, brains out of its occupied republics. So uh, then, Russian literature, okay, it's a big literature. I don't like saying like that because there are no small or big literatures, small or big cultures. All cultures are unique, important, and it goes without saying, um, we cannot measure by the size of the country's territory, its influence, but they also have this totally sacred attitude not saying there are bad writers, there are interesting writers, you may like reading them, but there is nothing sacred about Russian literature. It's not that everyone has to know it. For example, I'm a huge fan of Latin American literature. I know many authors, I like the style, I like the wordings, it's my kind of metaphors, my kind of plots, but I totally understand that there are lots of people who dislike Latin American literature, for example, my mom. And, um, uh, it's all about the taste, but it's not about the greatness. And in Russia, it is always about the greatness. Then that totally toxic idea of the big brother, actually very Orwellian, but they always see themselves as the biggest brother in the family or something. I don't believe in uh, geographical brotherhood or political brotherhood. Uh, but uh, no one wants a relative like Russia because it's very, I cannot even say toxic because, you know, toxic is someone who makes you feel bad. Toxic is not someone who kills you. So it's much worse than uh, toxic. And it is always interesting to me that so many sensitive, so many well-developed countries that talk so much about... Um, I don't know, problems of racism, problems of equality, problems of freedom of speech, still try to negotiate something with Russia because Russian problems, Russian violence, that Russian chauvinism that this country, this empire demonstrates the world for centuries is definitely more toxic than some issues about, I don't know, what actors play, what roles in the movies. I'm not saying that this is not important. It is important. But when you look at the war, people killed in thousands, children killed in thousands, then, and you share democratic values, you speak about these pillars of the civilized world, and then you still think about negotiations with Russia after it has committed so many crimes, not only about against Ukraine, but against humanity, against international law and so on. So to sum it all up, I have to tell you that only those victims of uh, geography who border with Russia can fully understand how problematic and how dangerous that is. Only those people who were occupied by Russia, uh, who were part of Soviet Union or this communist, I don't know, how do you call it, part of the world, can feel the depth of the dangers and hatred that was spread by um, government, uh, by various institutions. Also, I think that, uh, like, very often, you know, when I travel before this war, you can come across people and the further you move west, the less problems you encounter, less corruption, I don't know, better roads and so on. And I have come across one very clever idea. I've heard it in one of the conversations uh, that, for example, let's say it's 
uh, Germany lives better than Poland, Poland lives better than Ukraine, Ukraine lives better than Russia. And uh, that is because, like, but why Ukraine did not manage to do something as, for example, like, I don't know, Poland did not achieve it that quickly. Because we were closer to this epicenter of evil. We were apart, we were occupied. And that is really like, you have lots of traumas coming with you. Uh, you have millions of your people killed and best people killed. You have millions of your people stopped in what they did, like creating, thinking. You have lots of people and ideas stolen and taken to the Moscow center. Um, you were living in a closed society, poisoned by propaganda. So there are lots of things that poisoned us for decades or centuries, but luckily somehow we oppose it always. And I do see this war as one of the most important final battles between the evil and good, between uh, the world of normality and Orkland. And in future, when we win, honestly, I would like to have a huge uh, wall that would separate me from Russia. I know it's not like ideal and the, uh, typically to represent something negative in the mentality of people, but look at what they are doing here. Look at what they are doing to the world. Imagine, sometimes I have this idea, what would the world be if we did not have this war? Like we have just went through COVID pandemics. There are so many problems everywhere. But when you have war, all the other problems actually disappear. So this Russian chauvinism uh, is definitely one of the worst inventions that Russia constantly exports to the world and most often to its neighbors like Ukraine. And um, I'm really happy for all of you who are not neighbors with Russia. Let me know in comments, have you ever come across any examples of chauvinism and particularly Russian chauvinism and how do you fight that? I don't mean physically, but I mean morally. How do you change the situation for the better? Also, thank you very much for your support to your countries, to your governments and to your people, those who do not forget about Ukraine as this war continues. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my vlogs, because I believe the world has to continue supporting Ukraine because this war is important not only for us but for the world and normality must win. Thank you for buying me coffees. Thank you for becoming my patrons. Slava Ukraini!